we're here. <laughs> we made it. Oh. After the sea threw us around violently for what felt like a never ending night, we arrived finally in Ireland in the still dark morning, tired, sick, and a little disoriented, but with this raw feeling of anticipation and excitement. This was it the start of a new chapter for us new lives even so much to learn and experience still so much unknown morning all she's a fresh one this morning Ooh. so let's have a little walk and talk away from the only noise here which is our diesel heater permanently on in the van at the moment because <laughs> it is pretty brisk outside it's very cold it actually dropped below minus last night so um, yeah we've been having to deal with that which is not ideal in the van because she's not really winter ready warning I might get emotional because it's just hasn't fully sunk in yet but it still is just so magical I can't describe it any other way this place the fact that we've done it <laughs> done this thing that we've dreamed of for years I've wanted to live this kind of country lifestyle for at least 20 years now and here we are we're doing it I thought for a long time that it wouldn't even be possible um, and we're here just the sound of birds came on clearing some pathways in the background so we've bought some very overgrown land as you'll see <laughs> Okay, this might be a really bad idea. <laughs> Navigating uneven ground with a cup of tea and a camera on a stick. <laughs> I don't know, maybe this will get old. I hope not, but there's just... <sighs> you hear Kate Van in the background. There's just such a sense of awe and wonder to this place the stars at night oh, we have almost no light pollution here at all so that has been incredible just gazing at the stars when the, when the skies are clear love it oh my goodness sort of thing that i used to dream of i used to stand in our garden in our built up town and you could pick out some stars but there was a lot of light pollution i just knew that there was so much there that I couldn't see and I just have always longed for that just being able to just stand outside in the evening and look up and just be reminded of how small we are how insignificant in a good way you know and how a part of something just so vast so big so unknown feels really good and I was gonna say the other thing that I love is just the quiet obviously K-Man's disrupting that a little bit right now cracking on with projects um, in the background <laughs> He's clearing a path for a digger that will be arriving. More on that next week and next week's update. But when we're not making noise, <laughs> when the diesel heater of the van's not making noise, it's just so peaceful. I love just coming out in the morning, just listening to the sounds of nature. Oh, so good for the soul. We can't hear any road noise here. We talked about this a few years ago we were like do you think we could ever live somewhere where you can't hear a constant hum of a road our house backed onto a church um and then the other side of the church there was a really big road and it was just constant road noise you know and most of us live that way so it just feels like such a privilege to be here and just have such genuine stillness and the other thing that i'm loving being here is just being out in nature every day this is kind of what the dream life is for us there's other aspects of it of course whoa there <laughs> you nearly just fell over oh my goodness my cat-like reactions came into play we're sitting on a hill here as you can probably tell a very steep hill we'll talk about with the land in a minute but <laughs> i think the frost on the grass was adding a stiffness to it and it's starting to melt a little bit <laughs> so the whole tripod went <laughs> what was i saying being out in nature just being out here every day this is this is the dream for us just being able to open the doors and be outside not surrounded by 
bricks and concrete anymore, but grass and trees and birds and insects and cows and sheep. Oh, I realise what a privilege it is and I feel it very deeply. I feel a ton of gratitude. So it's just the theme of my life these days right now while this is all sinking in. It's just immense soul deep gratitude. I've been stopping filming because of K-Vans banging in the background. We're gonna have to just deal with it. So let's talk about the realities of, of what we've bought, what we've got ourselves in for here. <laughs> So we have purchased a 1800s, we, th we can't actually pinpoint the date exactly, we think it is late 1800s, 1880 something, stone cottage, um, which has been partially renovated at different points in its life. Um, and it's been sitting vacant for at least, I think, four or five years. The last occupants, they didn't actually live in it. They bought it, I think, to fix it up and sell it on. So they'd started that process. And for whatever reasons, maybe the pandemic, etc., they um, abandoned the project. And it's just been sat there kind of gutted with some work started inside for years now. So that's the house. Um, we also have a very dilapidated um, barn that we discovered um, <laughs> and, and I'll show you that maybe next week. And we have the best part of all is around six or seven, I can't remember the exact number, around six or seven acres of land. Now that oh, feels like such a dream and we have the view. Um, and just the location, we are really, really fortunate with the location here. We're about 15 minutes drive from a, like a good little kind of country town which has some nice cafes and little independent shops and things. So we're not super remote yet where we are. There's, it's like, I guess you could call it like a hamlet. I don't know the local vernacular phrase for that. Let me know in the comments. There's about five houses dotted around in the vicinity here. We've met a couple of names already, super nice. Um, so yeah, so this is what we've bought. And the reality of the land is that similar to the house, it has just been left. So it is extremely, I'll show you behind me here, extremely overgrown. So you can see that, I mean, I'm not a tall person, but that's <laughs> like going up to my head height. So um, we're going to have a bit of a, task on our hands to try to actually make good use of it whilst also not disturbing too much so we want to strike the balance there we don't want to kind of come in start ripping everything out and destroying wildlife habitats we're very much into learning how to live harmoniously with nature so yeah we've got our work cut out for us So we arrived uh, at the house. The house is basically a shell, not habitable. And we had no running water, no electricity, no sewage. <laughs> so fortunately we arrived in our van, which is our home on wheels, which has made the whole project and buying this more tenable because we didn't have to worry about where are we gonna live while we're renovating. Um, didn't have to worry about getting a static caravan on site and getting planning for that. You know, we've got our van. We've been living in it, as you know, for months um, as we've been traveling around Europe, so we're quite used to that. So that's been quite fortunate, but showing up and not having any of those amenities on site actually makes van life kind of challenging. So we've been having to, you know, spend a few nights here off grid. <laughs> Literally, we wanted an off grid homestead lifestyle and we've arrived day one. <laughs> no grid to even hook up to, should we wish. So it's meant staying here, parking up, basically wild camping on our own land um, for a few days at a time, then heading somewhere else locally to use the services dump the toilet all that sexy stuff fill up our water tank um, and charge our batteries because um, I think I mentioned in a previous video that our battery to battery charger so the thing that should be charging our batteries when we're driving broke it just was I think some sort of faulty component uh, several months back now and of course we're not getting much through solar right now 
So that's a little bit limiting. So every few days we're heading off to connect up, get ourselves sorted. Um, fortunately, we've made friends with a really lovely chap who has a campsite not far from here in these kind of lodges up on the top of this hill. It's beautiful. He's got a donkey and goats and ducks and sheep and it's just it's delightful so it's really no hardship to go there for um, either for the night or sometimes we'll just go and use the services and pay for that and then head off again so that's the reality we've we've rocked up to an uninhabitable house with no services and amenities but we're actually really happy <laughs> so i think the thing just to be frank about is that when we first arrived and i was kind of reminded of <laughs> The enormity of this project i was a little bit overwhelmed i'll be honest about that however two things have kind of really shifted me out of that quite quickly one is that we've done this before okay not this <laughs> we haven't lived rurally we haven't started a homestead but we have renovated two properties previously Kayvan has the skills. He knows, largely speaking, what he's doing on that front. So I'm not actually concerned about the, the renovation of the house. And the other thing is, and I said this to Kayvan when we were celebrating, so we had our postponed anniversary and new year and kind of arrival here celebration. We cooked some steaks. We got the barbecue out and cooked steaks, even though it's really cold outside um, and had just a really lovely evening. But what I said to him then is the thing that really had helped cut through the overwhelm of what we've taken on here and what we're doing you know moving country trying to integrate into a new community and it is a different culture um, there's of course lots of similarities but lots of differences starting a homestead that's not something we've ever done before and of course the actual project of the house this very old cottage in need of love and attention as I said to him it's the thing is is that I think the house can be the most overwhelming part in many ways just because it is um, so needing in everything this is why we're here not for the house but for this 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 land this connection with nature being able to be just outside and in it every day I said to him this is the dream we get to be recognizing that we're living it right now not be put off by the enormity of the project that we're embarking on but actually enjoy it enjoy the project enjoy the journey because every day we get to be doing what we've been craving what our souls have been yearning for for years which is being outside working and living in connection with nature and each other daily and that is so exciting i'm gonna get myself back inside because as you can see i don't know if the camera picks up <laughs> it's very cold out here um that i'm actually i'm wrapped up nice and well i've got two jumpers on which is the <laughs> the way to manage it but it's my hands that get cold and i i don't like using gloves with the camera uh and stuff just because i'm worried that it's gonna slip i need some grippy gloves or something let's head back inside so next week i should have some progress updates for you things are gonna get cracking around here really quite quickly um so <laughs> fingers crossed that's all going well and until then go live your dream life bye for now